Hybrid Lighting. Discover Mirrorless recommends the LED hybrid lighting solution from Quantum called the Omicron. Omicron. Hi, I'm Carol here at this G Plus Hybrid Hangout talking color. And I'm going to let each of our panelists introduce themselves. Take it away, Hi, everybody. Out. Yeah, my name's Brenda Hipsher. Uh, I'm a field marketing manager with X Right Photo, and color is really my blood. I ran a custom color lab back in the 80s in Nashville, Tennessee. And so uh, when, uh, when I came along uh, to X Right Color Management Products, uh, I, they are near and dear to my heart. Uh, because that means that we get predictable and accurate color all the time. So thank you very much for inviting me today. Welcome. Hi, I'm Lynette Kent. I'm a photographer and an educator and a book author. And um, I live with one of these uh, color experts, so I became one as well. And I can't live without my, my x right toys, which are just the best that, that are out there for getting the color right on my screen, in my camera, on my shots, in my projects, and on my prints. So here I am. Welcome. Hi, my name is Gary Poole, and I'm a, uh, I guess you'd say, a professional color editor. I've worked in the pro professional lab field since about 1977. Uh, I've owned a studio. I've worked in uh, professional lab color management since the 80s, and uh, I love color. I, I, color's in my blood, too. Like Brenda said, I, I'm very fascinated by color and loved it ever since I saw my first prism when I was like four years old. And uh, Brenda and x Right have been a huge help to me in my endeavor to create a uh, uh, a color editing division of retouchup.com. I'm now the color division manager for them and we have uh, files from literally all over the world and uh, so we had to set up a very tight system of color control and uh, it's working quite well. Thank you Brenda and thank you X-Rite. So um, I do a lot of color correction of files. I don't do a lot of photography much anymore but I, I'd like to advise others and help them and so color accuracy is uh, really very uh, a very passionate thing for me so I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Welcome. And I'm Chuck Jones. I am a professional photographer and the editor-in-chief of the cameraforum.com and I use these things. <laughs> Welcome Chuck. I'm Carol Schlintz. I'm a photographer. I do portraits and sports and I'm um, a pretty passionate mirrorless shooter. That's how I met the uh, the heroes who are here. Those are my my hero team members. And one of the fun things when you get new camera gear, which my mirrorless stuff is new to me and I just got a GH3, so it is brand new, is finding out how the color works and um, and playing around with what I can do to make it better and easier. Certainly I'm very concerned about getting the color right when I send my files to the lab. So color is really important to me, perhaps not the passion it is to the rest of the panelists, but it's critical for the success of my business, so it's pretty important. And with that, all right, we have um, a list of topics, and we may go off the list, but at least it's a place to get us started. So the first thing on our list has to do with custom white balance in camera. And I think this was one of, one of my additions to the list. And I want to put it out there to all of you who deal with custom white balance. It's something that I haven't done. I usually correct after the fact, and I know, boo. Um, but I'm ready to start. I really am. And so I want to know kind of the, the basics of is it static? Is it something you set up once and then you use it forever? Do you set it up under every condition? And if you do, what do you do when you're in changeable conditions? So who wants to play with that? Well, I'll take that because um, I'm guilty of not doing it every single time I tell myself I should do it. Basically, you to set, you correct it, you get a white balance in camera. I think a custom white balance, one, it's, it's easy to do. It's not, you, you know, the auto white balance, it's one of those auto tools that you auto know better. Um, <laughs> you ought to not use. Yeah, exactly. It's just, Letter word. It varies all over the place. And um, yeah, it's the easy thing. Throw it on auto white balance and shoot, shoot, shoot. But it just, you won't get the results. And yes, you can correct in post, but you still, it's still a garbage in, garbage out rule. The better stuff going in, it's still going to be better coming out. 
So you set a white balance in your camera. What you basically do, whether whatever kind of shooter you are, you take a picture of a, a neutral reference. Um, I because this is something I have with me all the time. It's my color checker passport from that's right. I use these to color correct afterwards, but I shoot this in the field, and you you just have to you know depending on your camera, you have to just get mainly that center focus part on here and just so shoot it you know handhold it, just shoot right up against it. Or if you have a long lens, then you just want to hold it for you. You shoot a picture of that, and then you tell your camera use this as my white balance. It depends on the brand of the camera, what two buttons you're going to have to press. Hit that and you set and it sets a custom white balance. Then you've got that and you go ahead and shoot. Now when you change locations or clouds come over and the sky turns a different color, change your settings. If you're in Southern California and stuff doesn't change much, you probably don't have to change it for the rest, you know, until you gets night or day or whatever, you know, and the only time I don't use this, the only time when I'm shooting sunsets, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to change the color balance in my in my when I'm seeing. So I might have used it during the day, but I won't go and redo it at night. I'll just use it for the daylight. And I could be wrong, Gary can correct me on that, but that's what I've been doing. And doing something like this, just you set a white balance to start is the easiest thing in the world. And already it's gonna make your colors in your camera, the pictures you take, absolutely better than what they were. That's the first step. Yeah, I do I do something very similar. Uh, I use, I've got the full-size card I use for studio work or if I'm going to be uh, shooting under controlled conditions. But uh, the other thing, and this is a tip for uh, the folks looking in from home, if you've got a, a paper towel or a napkin, okay, these are bleached, these are very, very close, uh, they're not exactly on, but as you can see, they're very, very close. So just pick up a napkin, use that. It's like three, three, four keystrokes on the back of the next seven that I use uh, to set a custom white balance, and I, I set it every time I use it. I want to get my color as close as I can in camera because I tend to push as far as I can in, uh, in post to do adjustments, uh, things like color grading, stuff like that. So I want to start out with that with a known base base system. I have I've found like I say I don't do a lot of shooting but I sure see a lot of very ugly pictures and when I see something really bad I very politely try to call and ask what exactly did you do and uh, I try to I am I am a nerd about testing I believe the biggest mistakes uh, that photographers make is they make assumptions they buy a new camera and they assume that their new uh, Canon 5D Mark II is going to shoot like their Canon 5D. They assume that their Mark III is going to shoot like their Mark II or they assume that, assume that their Nikon is going to work the same way their previous model. And I say if you buy, uh, if you spend two or three thousand dollars on a uh, on a new piece of camera equipment, for heaven's sake, test it, see what it's going to do. Uh, I used to only shoot JPEG, and since I met Brenda and started working with the, um, yes, I know, and working with the uh, Color Checker Passport, I am absolutely amazed what the Passport has done for my photographs. But not everybody wants to shoot and profile. I love it. It's worth it to me, but not every, people are scared to death of raw. It's like I'm scared to shoot raw. I'm scared to shoot JPEG because if I blow it, it's gone. So I think the biggest thing photographers can do to help themselves is, like you said, Lynette, to try to get the white balance in camera properly. I am a firm believer in the pop-up target. I have used the uh, Easy Balance by Lastolite. Uh, I've got three different sizes. And I shoot that, and one thing I've discovered, and I actually did a, a smarticle about it a few months ago, the closer to 5,500 Kelvin your light source is, the better off your ambient white balance is. If your white balance is extremely on the warm side, say 3,000, 3,500 Kelvin, or very uh, blue on like around 8,000, 9,000 Kelvin, late afternoon, early morning, and you use that gray target, in JPEG, the skin never comes out the right color. Maybe I'm doing something <laughs> wrong, but it does not work. And I'm trying to have the time to do a full explanation. But 
I'm finding with a flash, if you just simply take a flash, like we did in the old days when you used Bronicas and Hasselblads and film, take a flash outdoors because it's always the right color. If you do a custom white balance with a flash, it will be on target every time without fail. The biggest problem I have as a color editor is trying to correct images that people have shot in auto white balance <laughs> in JPEG and did not consider exposure or they had one client that did a custom white balance one time and she thought forevermore it would be right and so no matter where she was she set it on custom so her things would in JPEG and they would come back orange and blue and green and purple and she said I did a custom so I think you not only need to do a custom you need to know how to do a custom but uh, I have found too and uh, and I'll hush in a minute I know I I've got all, I'm very passionate about this subject but I have now, found tell us how you really feel about it. This is how I really <laughs> feel. In 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 fact, I'm I'm in the middle of an email right now to a client who was very insulting about some work I did, and I'm trying to politely say maybe you should consider selling used cars. But <laughs> um, qu quite quite seriously, I have found that using presets for me for ambient light is more accurate than trying to do a custom white balance. I know that may go against the grain, but Consider the source. It is all Kelvin degrees. Just think Kelvin. If you're indoors and uh, you're under an, uh, incandescent light, set your camera to 3,200 or 3,000 Kelvin. If it's shady, set it to about 6,000, 6,500 Kelvin. And I teach a photo class, two levels. In the second class, we actually get into color. And I tell them, let's evaluate the light and set our balance accordingly. And amazingly, they come out close, shady, cloudy, um, you know, uh, they work. Everything but, uh, but fluorescent, and all bets are off with that. But they're working for me, so I'm done. So you're using you know, a question for you. you okay. Yeah, so. Well, that was first. <laughs> uh, wait a second, guys. Let's let Brenda get a word in edgewise, and then we'll let Lynette have her question. <laughs> well. Well, yeah, and so here's the deal. Everybody knows that I'm I work for X Right Photo, so this is no uh, no surprise to anybody that uh, I truly believe that our white balance cards are superior. And Gary, I would certainly invite you to use an X Right white balance card in those situations where you're having difficulty, and see if that clears it up. I will try. But but, but the real issue here that we're talking about is if we're shooting raw then it, it really doesn't matter what our white balance is set at because it, it's only to keep us feeling uh, good about what we see on the back of our camera. The, the file is not processed until we actually run it through some processing software. And it's at that point that the white balance must be essentially uh, whatever we want it to be. That's where the headers get changed in the file to tell the software how to profile, how to process the image. So, but if we're shooting JPEG, it is absolutely essential that we do some kind of custom white balance or, as Gary says, get as close as we can to the Kelvin temperature. Right. Now, we all know that the sensors in these cameras are not the same. We can have two cameras that are uh, the same model, the same brand, and the sensor may produce color very differently. Um, so it's, it's uh, essential that we are doing these uh, custom white balances to get as close as we can when we're shooting video, uh, which is a compressed format. It is not a raw format. And when we're shooting JPEG, anything that's processed in camera. So, so I, I understand the, the, the uh, importance of being comfortable at looking at the back of the camera. We certainly never want to use auto. I, I'm 100% with all of you on that. That definitely is a four-letter word, and you definitely ought to know better. Uh, I'm going to steal that one when I leave here today. But, <laughs> like but, uh, but, but the reality is that when we shoot raw images, these images are not processed. Uh, until we're ready to use something like Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw or some other software to actually process the images. And once we do that, we absolutely essentially must have a way to white balance. Well, if I can jump in here, there's another reason, especially with these new hybrid cameras that you're, t the mirrorless cameras you're talking about, is that it's so easy to shift from uh, a video mm -hmm. to a shooting raw that if you don't set that white balance, you know, shoot it or shoot your JPEG. Set the white balance. Shoot it for raw. 
shoot the white balance as a first thing because then suddenly you go, oh, I need to do that as a video, and you click the video button, but guess what? You have no white balance. So it's much better to just do it across the board. Forget it, raw, whatever. And I have a, a friend who's a fantastic portrait photographer uh, named George Deloche here in, in L.A., and he assures me with his, and he's a lighting expert, that if, and he only shoots raw, that he always shoots a white target first, you know, color balances the camera first, regardless, even though he's shooting wrong. He says he still believes it makes a better uh, final image no matter what. I, I absolutely agree with that. Oh, good. Uh, I, I was deferring to him because he knows more about photography than I do. No, I absolutely agree with that. I've, uh, I've shot raw for years uh, and digital since it all started. And I can tell you for a fact, with every one of my bodies, uh, every one of my, right up to my uh, leaf digital back, uh, if, you, if you can nail the temperature right, with a, a good white balance going in, then you can correct. Uh, but if you don't or you're off, then it's it's a nightmare. And I, I mean, you're all over the place with the sliders or with the uh, the color tools or the analyzers or anything, and it still never gets right there as if you had done the white balance to start with. I do well, it by habit now. It's the first thing I do. Uh, is I'll pick it up and the first thing I'm going to do if I'm going into a shoot, it's like uh, my little trick, what do I do with my lens cap? It always goes in my left pocket. Well, the next thing after that went in the left pocket was the, the white balance happens. Yeah, I, I completely you know agree with you. It's always the best to do it. And I think Lynette brings up a really excellent point of being able to switch back and forth, you know, fluidly between still yeah. and video images. I mean, that that goes without saying. And if I was, if I there was any misunderstanding about what I meant to say here is if you're not going to auto white balance in camera, you still have to shoot something that gives you an, the ability to white balance in post. So you're, you're, it, either way, you got to white balance first. Right. Well, with, with stills, uh, it's really important, and shooting raw, it's really important. But with video, you have no choice. That's I right. mean, the color correction in video, it's grading. And if you want to sit there and go frame by frame by frame by frame and change a color around, uh, uh, you know, wait. it uh, horrendous. Light, Lightroom. Wait a minute. Yes. Uh, I just wrote the next Smarticle coming out December 11th on basically doing that, and I'm certainly not a video shooter. I have a $300 point-and-shoot camera that I shot the video with. And yeah, but you're I doing did, it in Lightroom, right? All the, well, I brought it in with my stills in Lightroom, and I simply used the color checker, task force, mm -hmm. from X-Rite, you know, right, this little tool <laughs> that I still think is... I just ordered myself two more so that, you know, if someone ever yeah. loses it, I don't have to kill somebody. Um... <laughs> I, I just had this in my pocket, so you you shoot this either as a frame of your video or with the other camera right then and there in mm -hmm. the exact same light, and then go ahead and shoot, preferably the same camera obviously that you're going to shoot the video with, and then you um, you can create a profile for one frame. You can do a capture frame in Lightroom, mm -hmm. take that frame into the develop module, which mm -hmm. tells you you can't edit video, but you can. Mm -hmm. You create the color profile using the tools that, with the little software. It's like it's bimbo software. You just press the button and it does it for you. And it says come back and it says, hey, we made you your profile for whatever it's called. You quit Lightroom, you reopen it, and then you go back to that frame. You set the, make sure the profile's set to the profile name that you gave it to that, that uh, uh, the color checker passport software made for you. And then you sync it with the rest of that video file, and darn mm -hmm. if it doesn't do, and it does correct it. It fixes it. So you can. I mean, you're, we're not talking about changing well, night, but you can actually improve those, especially blues and purples. Oh, but then you, ha then you have to render it out, and when you render it out, you're dealing with a second-generation file because you did it in Lightroom. Okay, there, Much better to do it in Final Cut with the original clips, uh, and then you're not wor dealing with a second generation. Uh, that I, you know, like I said, I don't know. I mean, my clips are not that great valuable when you're considering that I have a little TS4 from Panasonic. It's a $300 camera, so that's what I'm shooting. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's like it's like everything else. If uh, if you're just shooting from home, you know, a, a small color checker is probably great, uh, and it's all you need. But I know you, Lynette, and I know you got the tools there. Why don't you pull them out and show them to us? Oh, which tools are that? 
Well, the ones you just showed off, that uh, oh. big box, that big beautiful box of all the, nah, that's the little one. Well, this, this. I want to see the beamer. <laughs> you buy a camera, you buy one of these. They're that's not, right. That's just the way it goes. That's right. This is, it's $100. And it, it worth know, every penny. I'm sure that they'll tell you you should buy new ones every year. I'm sure that's what they tell you because they have a date and all sorts of stuff. Uh, no, not every year. Not if, every year. Well, Absolutely not, if you take um, care of it. It's, it's closed. That's what's beautiful about it. It's the size of a passport. fits into your, your vest pocket or anything you can do. My pants are too tight to fit into my pants pocket. However, they fit in my husband's pants pocket. So that's why we always have one. And it's just so easy to use. But it does go with something else. If I don't care what monitor you're looking at, and I have two very expensive ASO monitors, which are incredible, but it doesn't matter. And I, right now I'm on a little MacBook Air, and it's a beautiful little monitor. It's not a retina or anything like that. It's just a great little monitor, but I don't care what it is. If you monitor is set the way it comes out of the box, I don't care if the monitor costs you $5,000 or it costs you $100. If you don't use something from like x rights little color monkey display on up to their granddaddy old i1 pro or whatever tools that, that they make in between like color monkey i think that's the photo one it's color monkey photo yeah color monkey photo if you don't use something and those are all price ranges and they have them all over the place to fix your monitor whatever you color correct you're wasting your time you may as well just Send it right out of the camera, forget it, because you're totally wasting your time. You can't color correct if the window you're looking through has got a filter that turns everything blue or white or green or whatever. So your monitor has to be right. Shoot in the field, get it good in camera, as good as you can, and then if you're going to play with Photoshop, Lightroom, Photoshop Elements, whatever it is, you must be looking at a good monitor. I mean a color corrected or fixed somehow monitor. Yeah, and for your color checker targets, yeah, you're going to need to replace them at some point. But honestly, if you keep them clean, keep your fingers off of them, the oils on your fingers degrade the color patches worse than almost anything else. you got to keep them clean, which means you got to keep them. That's why the passport's so great. It folds up, it goes in your camera bag, and everything's protected. And you got to keep them dry. And the more you keep them out of the light, the better off you're going to be. But, you know, certainly they can last. The, the passport uh, is recommended to be replaced in about two years if it's cared for properly. And we all know that these things will last much longer. But, you know, I get these funny emails sometimes. I had a guy that called me, uh, he sent me an email and said, how do you clean a color checker classic <laughs> target? And I said, you buy a new one. Right. <laughs> you know, because these, these, most people don't understand. These colors are not printed. These are solid colors. This is an instrument. It's not, it's not a piece of paper. It's not a piece of plastic. It's not a piece of cardboard. Um, so it is really a, a color measuring and a color reference uh, instrument. And just because something looks white or looks gray doesn't mean that it is uh, digitally neutral, right. which means that in RGB, all three numbers are going to be the same. So this is the advantage of using uh, color balance cards, white cards, color checker classic that are, are digitally neutral. That is very critical. We had a, a client one time that uh, was uh, doing her own processing and she was shooting uh, a gray card and her stuff was always yellow, extremely yellow. And it turns out that after finally, a, I think it was a Fuji uh, representative happened to be in the area. I said, please stop by and check out this gal's gray card. Her, her stuff's yellow. And he came back and laughed and called and said, well, she's using a paint chip. And the, yeah, and the paint chip actually has a bluish haze to it. So if you call it neutral, <laughs> it better be neutral. And so I'm a firm believer that if you're going to use a target, use a target. But it's... It, it stymies me that photographers will spend hundreds and even thousands of dollars on new toys and software, but they're, they're scared to death to spend $100 for a valuable tool like a, a color checker passport. And there's no reason to be intimidated with this stuff. X-Rite has an amazing website with so much information. You know, even the, somebody as dumb as me can go on their website and learn how to use the tools. But uh, I want to tell you two quick things, and I'll let somebody else talk. Uh, the, the 
we're talking hybrid photography here and quite honestly there is no raw in video so you have to get the white balance right you can't go back and process after the fact and yes having a target and frame capture is good but as you know it's better to capture as close as possible and uh, one of the things that I've found in playing around with uh, my little Lumix camera is that since it has a live view instead of looking through the lens, it's not an SLR, you're looking through a processed uh, image and you can do a live white balance. I've actually taken a gray card and put in the frame and balance the light as I see it and I do that once and I switch to video and it stays the same at least on this camera and now different cameras may be different you'll need to test it on each model but just most simply of, do, a, do that. okay just do a, a live white balance as you're looking even look at your subject while you're talking and getting to know him or whatever you're doing just scroll the wheel around back and forth until it looks as close to normal as possible and then lock it down and leave it because uh, even if you shoot the stills raw and try to process the video to match you're not going to have as much luck so my th thing is get it as close as possible and use the tools necessary and Lynette I like your idea with using the gray card I actually did that with uh, some videos I was practicing in making videos for the vlog and I videoed myself and I'm not very attractive on video I come out kinda greenish as close as possible and I'm not really a Martian um, and so I took the color checker passport and just videoed it for a couple of seconds and then created the still, like you said, and went through and set the, the contrast range where I wanted it. Neutral went on the gray patch and neutraled out and beefed up the colors a little and then applied it. It was an amazing difference. These tools are very simple and they're very inexpensive. I mean, for a for hundred dollars, for heaven's sake, that's a lot of peace of mind. And um, another point I wanted to make is many people that have used different cameras they all shoot different and even in JPEG you can photograph the target I've done it with a 5D and a 5D Mark II with a local client you just photograph that target and the, of the one that you like and you just keep working back and forth until you can apply the offsets right in the camera to achieve as close as possible and I'm in, in my spare time which I don't really have much right now <laughs> I'm working on a way to perfect uh, a camera matching sequence even in JPEG, I think it's very possible. Uh, the the raw with the custom profile is absolutely perfection ideal. But some people are just scared to death to shoot raw, and they want to be able to shoot JPEG. So I think it's an amazing tool. And I think a photographer that does not have a passport is just asking for trouble. I really do. Well, maybe that should be the qualification to be a photographer. You have to have a passport. So you can't <laughs> another without a passport. So you can't be a photographer without a passport. Oh my God. Write uh, a passage. There's your ad for you, Brenda. <laughs> well, yeah, and that thing works really well, too. I don't have a passport. Will this work? <laughs> yes, it will. Just download the software, actually. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brenda, but I believe it does. That's absolutely true. The, uh, the camera calibration software, which is you can download uh, for, uh, for free from the Internet at xrightphoto.com. Just go to any color checker uh, classic or passport uh, product page, and you can download the software. It's the color checker classic that it's built off of, so absolutely you can use that. You already have that check. That works great. Right, I was trying to figure out what you're saying, Gary. You said you can... Dial it in in camera. Were you talking about matching two different cameras, or no? This is if you're if you you've got your little Lumix, your little uh, uh, mirrorless camera, and you're looking at the back of the camera, and you push the uh, at least on my camera, it has to be in the mode called Intelligent Auto Plus, and you have a scroll wheel. This I've got a Lumix G uh, G A G X two G F two, and you can push the white balance button and and scroll the wheel and see it change from blue to warm and so you can live white balance you can see it but you're you depending on your eyeballs it's very subjective yeah and your eyeballs are good it's, it's, my eyeballs are good my husband's eyeballs are good because we're all color people but um, go the, I mean you but would, if you have a white card out there it should look white or if it's physically in front of the camera you can kinda of match the two together it's worked well, for me okay yeah. matching the two getting them correct and it's, it's worked pretty good for me it's a lot better than auto I'll tell you that so oh, I'm sure <laughs> anything's better than it's I yes. said that's my line you ought to know better right yeah, there's like that, that four-letter word again right 
Well, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the four-letter word and tell you about an experience that I had last night because I think it's going to blow your mind and it'll probably end our, our session so I'll get the last <laughs> word and I'm liking that. Um, I got my GH3 two days ago and last night was my first opportunity to shoot it in, a, in an event-like circumstance with um, horrible fluorescent lighting and unpredictable people milling about a ribbon cutting for our local chamber. And I decided, I, I had a plan to use, um, I don't know, I was going to shoot it in, in uh, aperture mode. And right at the last minute, I decided I wasn't. I put it in intelligent auto, which means I got auto white balance. I know, so evil. However, I was smart enough to shoot um, my passport at, right at the beginning, in that light, so that I would have something to check it by. I cannot believe how close the color was. When I went back and I, I processed through Lightroom and I went in to develop and I took that little eyedropper and I put it on the white patch, it moved tint by two and it moved whatever is above it by ten. Temperature. That's, that's ten <laughs> out of, out of 12,000. It was so close that I could not tell the difference before and after with my naked eye. Now, I'm not for a minute saying that I'm going to stop using my color checker, that I'm going to use white, auto white balance for everything. Um, and I'm actually really intrigued by the, the custom concept that you delivered today. It was great information, and I am certainly going to, to try to make it as much a routine as Chuck makes it for himself, because I think that's the real deal for me, is if I don't make it part of my habit and my routine when I start a session, well, then I'm going to be, you know, this was a really good session because I did it and that. Well, well, we'll do a lot in post on that and hope, I mean, I don't want to go there. I'd like to actually start getting it really right. But my message is that where we've all acknowledged every camera, every, mo every individual camera, even when the models are the same, can be very different. Some of these new cameras have some amazing abilities. And... I guess I'm, I, I never shot auto white balance with my Nikon system. I mean, I probably tried it once, and that's why I never did it, because it was awful. And um, with my GH2, I did once in a while, but not so much. Didn't really like it there either. And I'm, I'm a raw shooter, but I still didn't really like the color from auto, so I would you know, put it, set it on one of the presets. I still really didn't do custom. With this camera, I still may do the, I will do custom color, but holy molars have they made huge improvements in the technology that does auto white balance. And I think we can't sell it short and we can't pretend like just because it didn't work real well in the past, going forward, it'll never work right. Awesome, guys, really um, just fascinating. I'm sure we could go on and on, except we're going to lose Gary. So we should probably <laughs> sign out before he just disappears on us. Um, to the heroes, I put the challenge out there to each of you to find something in this conversation that you really want to take in depth and make that a blog post at Discover Mirrorless because it's really cool to have a broad, and this wasn't really a general conversation, but to have a conversation like this where a lot of viewpoints were represented and um, a whole lot of this is and that's came up but for each of us to take a little piece of that, own it, and really drill down on it and put together something um, with even more meat um, to add to that wealth of knowledge that Discover Mirrorless is becoming. And then I have to say that somewhere up there, um, I'm so confused by where, so I just do this, is a button where you can subscribe to Discover Mirrorless. <laughs> and we really, really want you to do that because that way you get the updates and you know when Keep shooting, remember to shoot video, and keep dreaming. Bye, all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hybrid lighting. Discover Mirrorless recommends the LED hybrid lighting solution from Quantum called the Omicron. Omicron. Omicron.